Hello, everyone. The history of the Soviet atomic bomb is shrouded in a cloud of legends. Some of them, the USSR got the bomb from scouts who stole American nuclear materials and blueprints. Before I get to the topic of the video, I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my new Visioner History channel. There I post very interesting and shocking videos on interesting topics. The link to the channel is in the description and in the upper right corner. Well, we continue. Many think that the Soviet atomic project began in 1945, after Truman hinted to Stalin during the Potsdam Conference that the United States had created weapons of monstrous destructive power. But is it true? Today let's talk about the first Eurasian, Soviet industrial reactor F1, physical first. Of course, this is not true, the work in the atomic nucleus in the USSR began in the 1930s. In 1932, were obtained samples of radium, and in 1939 the calculation of the chain reaction of fission of heavy atoms has been made. In 1940, at the All Union Conference, Kurchatov presented a report on the fission of heavy nuclei. To create an atomic bomb, a large amount of plutonium is needed, and for this purpose an industrial reactor for plutonium production is needed, but at that time the Soviet Union did not have it. Igor Vasilyevich Kurchatov, head of laboratory number two, was entrusted with managing the creation of the first Soviet atomic reactor. There were many ideas, academician Alikhanov suggested using heavy water as a neutron moderator, which practically did not absorb neutrons. Kurchatov was going to use the American experience and build a boiler with a graphite moderator, arguing his position, in particular, that a graphite uranium boiler would be cheaper and less time-consuming to build. Soviet scientists and engineers had no experience in plant construction. Everything was done for the first time. Uranium, graphite, and structural materials were needed for the boiler. At the end of 1945, they started producing uranium and graphite. They began modeling the assembly of the reactor core, which they decided to build on the territory of laboratory number two. 24 hours a day in army tents, the scientists conducted experiments, studied the characteristics of uranium blocks, chose their optimal size. In the summer of 1946, construction of a special building K with a 10M deep shaft for the reactor was completed. The shaft played the role of biological shielding from radiation. Reactor in a tent. Sounds scary. On November 15, 1946, construction of the reactor began in the new K building. The uranium graphite reactor core along with the graphite reflector were built in layers. For this purpose, graphite briquettes measuring 100 by 100 by 600 millimeters with three cylindrical holes, in which uranium rods were inserted, were laid in layers. On December 25, 1946, at 2 p.m., the reactor was assembled. A self-evolving nuclear chain reaction with increasing neutron flux density was obtained at 6 p.m. on December 25, 1946. The reactor had no cooling system, so prolonged operation at high power was not possible. The graphite masonry was cooled by a jet of air from a fan. The core of the boiler contained 400 tons of graphite and 50 tons of uranium. Practically from the first day the boiler was operated round the clock at capacities from 100 W to 1000 kW. Test of the Nuclear Boiler Stalin praised the completion and startup of the first nuclear reactor. On January 9, 1947, two weeks after the startup of F1, he received the leading scientists and specialists, participants of the Soviet atomic project in the Kremlin and heard reports on the state of work. After the meeting, Stalin approved a resolution of the USSR Council of Ministers to award Kurchatov and Artsimovich for the creation and startup of the F-1 reactor and the creation of a facility for the electromagnetic method of uranium isotope separation. In March 1947, their employees who took part in these works, as well as German scientists and specialists, participants of the Soviet atomic project, were also awarded prizes. The F-1 reactor became a powerful tool for studying the physical characteristics of materials and core elements of the first industrial reactor. On August 29, 1949, the first Soviet atomic bomb was successfully tested at the constructed test site in the Semipalatinsk region of Kazakhstan. 
During its operation it became clear that in order to produce the necessary amount of plutonium, it is necessary to build a reactor with an improved biological shielding and heat removal, which was implemented in the A1 project, which I will talk about in the next article. The first Soviet reactor gave a major boost to the development of nuclear power and, well, to the production of plutonium for bombs. Stalin said after the war, if we don't test the bomb in the near future, the Allies will test the bomb on us. I agree with his statement, because according to declassified U.S. archives, the Americans had plans to bomb the USSR. F-1 was the prototype of RBMK reactor. And what is your opinion on the Soviet nuclear project? Could what Stalin was talking about happen? I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.